Feminine Frequency is back with a new gaming series that is targeting queer tropes of all things. And apparently games like Zelda amongst many others just don't do it right. So we're going to see exactly why games just hate queer people. With 2017's The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, Nintendo boldly rewrote the rules governing the design of one of the most renowned and beloved video game franchises of all time. By tossing out rigid, formulaic elements that had become deeply entrenched in Zelda games over a period of decades, the designers created a wonderful new vision for the series, one that emphasized exploration, experimentation, and player freedom. However, I did like Breath of the Wild, but I thought they did sort of slip up in a couple aspects, such as the dungeons, for example, as they replaced them with shrines. As one of my favorite moments in gaming was playing that water dungeon for the first time from Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. That was freaking amazing. That was really difficult for a kid as well. So, yeah, I like the graphics, I like the open world, but it seemed a bit bare for me. For as bold and innovative as Breath of the Wild was in so many ways, there was one aspect of it that felt like a disappointing relic of the past. At one point, Link's quest takes him to Gerudo Town, a desert city which men are forbidden to enter. Denied access, his quest seems to be at a standstill. What's a hero to do? Link picks up on rumors of a man sneaking in and out of the town, though as he follows the lead, he starts hearing not of a man, or vo as the Gerudo people say, but of a woman, or vi. Link heads to the rooftop where the woman is rumored to spend time in the afternoons, and that's where he encounters Vilia, the person all these rumors have been about. Mm -hmm. Vilia is indeed dressed in traditional female Gerudo garb, and when asked about the rumors of a man speaking in and out of the town, Vilia professes ignorance, so we can infer that Vilia identifies as female. But, and here's the problem, the game doesn't actually respect Vilia's gender identity. <laughs> The game doesn't respect the identity. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry that the game doesn't respect the fictional character's gender identity. You do realize this was made in Japan, right? You do realize it's a running joke of, you know, the guy that dresses as a girl and people think they're sort of weird. The only one I can think of just offhand is that cat guy from My Hero Academia. But... <laughs> Fuck. Uh, just think about actually making a video and then going, okay, well, Legend of Zelda, oh god, well, you didn't respect this guy's fucking pronouns, so you must be a bigot. <laughs> in fact, it plays that identity for laughs. See, in order to get the help you need from Vilia to sneak into Gerudo Town yourself, you have to choose interaction options that make Vilia feel as if you both find her attractive and have no clue that she's trans. But the alternate options at every step of the way suggest that Link is just playing along, stroking Vilia's ego to get what he wants, and that both Link and the player are in on the joke that Vilia can't actually successfully pass oh. as a cisgender woman. Of course we're in on the joke, Cham. Link's looking for a guy that has snuck into the Gerudo village. He finds a guy, and the guy's like, Oh no, I'm not a guy, I'm a woman! It's just ridiculous! But if he doesn't play along, if he's just like, No, nah, you're a guy... Obviously, that he's not going to help him out. It's going to be a, a fuck off. So you have to play along. Anime do this all the time with you know the big buff ass guy that's got like a wig on or something or lipstick and makeup, and they think they're a girl. That it's a joke because you know most people sort of realize outside of the whole progressive leftist bubble that a guy putting on a wig and saying they're a woman is fucking weird and funny. Jesus Christ, I can see why it's close to your heart, mate, but still, games should be censored and changed, and, like, you're saying that a fictional character in the world isn't getting its pronouns respected. That's just ludicrous. 
the joke is driven home after Link purchases some traditional Gerudo clothes for himself when a sudden gust of wind blows Vilia's veil aside to reveal some facial hair. Hilarious. Hey, it isn't the funniest joke going around, but it's pretty funny, so... <laughs> Thank God for Japan, I'm just going to say. I've seen some little snippets that they're going to start sort of kowtowing to Western feminism. Please don't. Please, just... I don't want anime ruined, okay? It's like the last bastion of where I can just go and watch something and I know feminist bullshit isn't going to be put into it. Or play a game that's not going to be just identity politics driven. It's a joke. Get over it. Most of the world sort of are on the same page that, you know, a guy that just dresses up as a woman is kind of weird. To be fair, Breath of the Wild's emphasis on player freedom means that the game allows you, as Link, to purchase and wear a decent assortment of feminine-coated clothing and jewelry throughout the game. And this freedom is definitely welcome. Some trans players in particular have created fan art celebrating Link in Gerudo attire. And some fans play the game with a personal interpretation, or headcanon, that Link is actually trans. There is no way in hell that Link is transgender. What are you talking about? You're actually starting to get me a little bit annoyed now. What, like, yes, generally in these type of games, you can dress up in feminine attire if you so want to. But Link fucking is not trans. I know you want him to be, but he's not. But while it can be empowering and validating for us as marginalized people to bring our own personal interpretations to our experience of a work... You are not marginalized. You have a mental illness, okay? And society is doing a lot of harm to you by believing your bullshit. You know, if a schizophrenic thinks that a guy on the moon has a sniper rifle trained at them, I think it's pretty freaking slack to validate that by saying, Oh, yep, there is a guy on the moon with a sniper rifle. It's trained at you right now. You should hide inside. You should never. You should get bulletproof windows on your car. It's, it's ridiculous. It's slack as hell. But holy shit. Dude, you probably have tons of money. Obviously, from the scam it is feminist frequency. You are not marginalized. That's, uh, are you saying that people with Asperger's are marginalized in society? It's still important to note that what the game itself gives us and what most players will experience is a cruel and unnecessary mockery of trans identities. In this regard, for all of its fresh and exhilarating design choices, Breath of the Wild feels positively ancient, part of a long, long tradition of video games perpetuating homophobia and transphobia. I'm sorry, please let's not group in being gay and being trans together. There is a massive difference between wanting to have sex with the other sex and believing you are the other sex, okay? I have literally no issues with gay people whatsoever. Don't really care that they want to sleep with other men if they're a man. Really doesn't mean anything to me. You go, go have it, have as much sex as you want. But trans people want to completely change our society so that a biological woman, you know, no, that's not actually a woman. And men can have birth and shit like that. It's fucking retarded. And yeah, it's just, we're not hopefully going to let it happen. How long a tradition are we talking? Well, in 1985, a public domain text adventure called, uh... Mad Party Fucker was released for the Commodore 64. In that game, you play someone attending a party whose goal, as the instruction screen states, is, quote, to fuck as many women as you can without getting boo food by fags, parentheses, contracting AIDS. <laughs> that does actually sound like a pretty fun game, but it's obviously aimed at straight people Yes, they're calling gays fags, which is a bit mean, I guess, but... <laughs> How do I get myself a Commodore 64? That looks pretty fun. End quote. That's a pretty clear example of mocking and demonizing gay men by presenting them as deadly predators. Now, maybe you think it's not really fair to consider a text adventure game made by a couple of guys in Cleveland that very few people have ever heard of or played when looking at the history of homophobia and transphobia in games. 
But Mad Party Fucker is far from the only game with explicit homophobic or transphobic elements in which the straight male protagonist's goal is to have sex with women. Yes, because to a straight man being fucked in the ass by a gay guy is not good. Like, for example, I'd be perfectly happy if they made a game where a gay guy has to fuck other men without obviously, I don't know, being raped by a woman or something like that, as they don't like women. So, you know, you can actually have it both ways. But still, I'm going to look up if there's a mod for, like, an emulator for that other game. <laughs> that seems pretty fun. Let's go back to the glory days of early graphic adventure games, a genre that Sierra Online innovated and then dominated for a long time. Following the breakout success of games like the original King's Quest, Sierra decided to take a 1981 text adventure game that they had published called, I kid you not, Soft Porn Adventure, and adapt it into a graphic adventure game. Thus, in 1987, the world was introduced to Leisure Suit Larry, a hapless schlub who starred in a whole series of games chronicling his routinely comical efforts to pick up women. The world of the Leisure Suit Larry games was deliberately, inescapably sleazy from the very first game on. But the series' aggressive homophobia and transphobia may have peaked with the sixth game, released in 1993. Well, Actually, technically, it's the fifth game in the series, but it's called Leisure Suit Larry 6. Anyway, the point is, Larry finds himself on an all-expenses-paid trip to a luxurious spa where he continues his tireless efforts to sleep with women. And if there's one thing that can ruin a straight man's pursuit of women, we all know that it's interacting with a gay man. I know I'm letting these clips play for quite a lot longer than normal but I just don't really know where to cut it out <laughs> well, but yeah when a guy is looking to pick up other women I guess he doesn't want to be hit on by another guy so <laughs> like I know there have been some like stereotypes there's a lot of stereotypes against straight men as well and once again you could make a game about you know a gay guy getting an all expense paid cruise and he's hit on by women and that's really bad it can go both ways. You're taking this shit a bit too seriously. And it's really funny. I'm finding some games that I might actually play. At the spa, Larry meets a character named, again, I kid you not, Gary Ferry, a flamboyant gay man who works as a towel attendant. Gary's aggressive sexual advances are presented as both humorous and threatening. And if you show sexual interest in Gary, it's an instant game over as the narrator comments that Larry's career as a swinging single has come to an ignominious end. Oh, sweetie, I thought you'd never ask. Oh, no. What have I done? So there's our requisite homophobia, but don't worry. This game has it out for trans women, too. It doesn't have it out for them. Like... This was quite a long time ago. Obviously, in terms of gay people, you know, thoughts have changed, though I still think it's perfectly fine to make a game like that. It's, it's called a joke. Okay, you're taking this way too seriously. Transgender people, it's just funny on the face of it, okay? Literally, you think you're a woman, and you look obviously like a guy. You can make your voice like this, oh, I'm such a girl, tee hee! But it doesn't mean anything. So, yeah, uh, you really, it's just, there's going to be such a backlash to this. Because you're like, you're being transphobic. No, I'm not scared of trans people. It's just weird, and you're trying to change our society just to fuck it over for some reason. One of the women Larry meets at the resort is named Chablis, a makeup artist who asks Larry to meet her for a midnight swim. As they're about to have sex, it is suddenly revealed, via what's supposed to be a visual gag, that Chablis is a trans woman. A revelation that causes Larry to throw up in horror and disgust, while the narrator Riley comments, No wonder Chablis knows what a man likes. The screen then goes black, and the sound effects suggest that Chablis rapes Larry. Yes, because this is, what, a soft porn game? And a guy doesn't want to, you know, have sex with another guy in a dress. And since this is in porn world, you know, of course he's going to be butt-fucked in the ass. It's just, it's just 
how these games generally tend to work. That's obviously a bad outcome for our main hero. And plus, you've had to go back to really old games to try and find something that's overtly, say, a bit mean. As judging it by today's standards is a bit slack. But still, they actually look like they're a lot of fun. As they don't take themselves so seriously not to offend the PC police as games nowadays do. A situation the game plays for laughs as we then cut to Larry gurgling mouthwash the next morning. This joke crassly makes light of the serious and very real trauma experienced by male survivors of rape and sexual assault. Meanwhile, the entire Chablis storyline culminating in the beach encounter is one big statement about how trans women are disgusting and deceitful. The fact that Chablis is a black woman makes it significantly worse. And of course, you're gonna bring race into this as well, cause they're not just transphobic, they're also massively racist. And it seems like they made a pretty fun game. For starters, the game traffics in racist stereotypes. If you look at Chablis' hair, you're told that it looks wild, untamed, tribal. All words that would be right at home in a racist 1930s adventure story about white people coming into contact with the exotic natives of Africa. And it reinforces transphobic rhetoric that racists regularly employ against cisgender black women. Certain right-wing political cartoonists, for instance, often use transphobic imagery in depictions of Michelle Obama, simultaneously implying that neither trans women nor cisgender black women are real women. This combination of racism and transphobia, which Leisure Suit Larry Six perpetuates in the character of Chablis, is called transmisogynoir. That is, the particularly dangerous hatred and oppression that black trans women experience as a result of existing at the intersection of misogyny, transphobia, and anti-blackness. That was just basically word salad. Transmisogynoir? What the hell are you talking about? You do realize it's because Michelle Obama looks like a guy. They're not actually saying that black women are men or something. It's just ridiculous. Plus, it goes into the whole thing of Michelle is the man in the relationship. It's, uh, you're really, really reaching now, dude. And I was going to stop it, but they get into GTA, so I think we'll stay for a bit longer. Not only do black trans women face particularly high rates of poverty and homelessness as a result of housing and employment discrimination, they are also at a staggeringly high risk of being assaulted or killed. When games use fictional black trans women as the butt of vile transphobic jokes like this, they're contributing to the very same cultural perceptions that make life so difficult for so many actual black trans women. A game from 1993 that probably not many people have played, though I'm going to be looking it up after this. And I'm sorry, probably black trans women have a bit of a problem because they're trans, so they think they're the opposite sex, which is ludicrous. And plus, they're probably having a little bit of problems, you know, from other black people. As you do realize that the most violence aimed at black people is from other black people. That's not racism, that's just purely the facts. And obviously I don't want anyone to be hurt, but still, you're just blaming it on a fucking video game from 1993? Like, w w can you name any other video game that has featured a black trans woman, like, that you perceive as poorly whatsoever, please? Unfortunately, harmful depictions of trans women in games didn't fade away with the 1990s. No, the staggeringly popular Grand Theft Auto games have ensured that millions of players continue to spend hundreds of hours in a universe where trans women and gay men are usually nothing but dehumanized objects of ridicule. The franchise's hatred for these groups is communicated through radio ads, billboards, business names, and NPC interactions throughout the series that are far too numerous to list. So. We'll just hit a few of the highlights. In GTA San Andreas, players must complete a mission on behalf of a character named OG Loke, who recruits the protagonist CJ to help him hunt down and kill a man named Freddy. It's strongly implied that Loke's motive for wanting Freddy killed is that the two of them had a consensual sexual relationship in prison. 
Yes, Freddie needs to be eradicated for no reason other than that he is gay. Mate, you do realize OG Loke is most likely a mobster or gangster of some kind, and he doesn't want people finding out he had sex with another guy, so it probably wouldn't go down too well, as this is, this is, it's a, this is a game. This is getting ridiculous. This is Grand Theft Auto, for fuck's sake. Shit happens in that game all the time. It's you don't take it seriously. Fucking hell. Feminist frequency just wants to kill everything. Like I said, I'm perfectly happy if you want to make these type of jokes. Can straight people if you want. Like it's you know, generally I can take a joke, unlike these fucking people. And if it's funny, it's funny, no matter what. But just Jesus Christ, dude. You're just getting way too butthurt over just Dumb shit that means nothing. Yeah, you know Jeffrey's been somebody's bitch for the past three <laughs> weeks, right? <laughs> I know. Man, I gotta kill some Chola motherfucker. He was dissing me, man. Jeffrey, you got the wrong idea, man. That was just a prison thing. You dropped the soap, sugar. I thought you were king, coupon. Oh, get him, boy. Hey, you need to go. I'm gonna kill that loud car motherfucker. Don't you say a damn thing, CJ. <laughs> was you lonely, low? Hey. I like a nice mustache myself. The game's hatred of queer people. Mate, they don't hate queer people. A mobster probably doesn't want to find out he had sex with men in prison. And that sequence of events was pretty freaking funny. And if you want to do a straight version of that where the straight guy is the butt of the joke, go right ahead. If you do it well, I'll laugh at it. It's you're taking this way too seriously. No one's going to see that and be like, oh, well, shit, I better go kill some gay people. It's just... It's just retarded. But anyway, guys, this has reached way past the 20 minute mark. There's still a bit more, but yeah, I'll leave the link of the original video down below. You can just skip to this part and watch the rest. Uh, let me know what you think. Uh, I'm probably a bit <laughs> slack. It's just I'm sick of people attacking video games. We're just relying on Japan now. As eventually, even GTA is going to count out of these people. So thank you, Japan. But anyway, let me know if you agree, disagree. Comment section down below. Hit a like if you liked it. And. Yeah, I'll be covering the other two of these, which are just as funny as this one, to be honest. But anyway, uh, thanks for watching, guys. If you got to this point, and I'll catch you later.